Hey everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal and happy Sunday, August 11th of 2024. As usual, it's a beautiful day to be alive. Now, I've got some short and sweet notes today and m mainly five um, thoughts came in this week during my journaling. Um, I spent a ton of time outdoors. I spent a ton of time working and um, it's been really hot here in Utah. So during my walks, I, I only got one early morning walk in this week where it was cool, but I spent a lot of time sweating in, in the heat of the sun and just appreciating the sheer um, enjoyment of being alive and being able to sweat and being able to go on this five mile walk I do every day. Um, there's, there's just something about getting hot and sweaty at least for me it makes me feel so good and it makes me feel so alive so some of these thoughts i think that you're going to be able to resonate with and then at the very end after i share these five thoughts um, i did a little bit of journaling on the lion's gate portal we're still in it through tomorrow the 12th but i did some journaling on the 8th which was thir uh, thursday at 8.08 .08 p.m. I just kind of made it super special. I have this uh, little Taurus candle that I, that I lit. I sat with my journal and I literally sat in my yard for five minutes and this little beautiful message came in. I'm gonna share that with you too. So the first thought is this, happiness is not the absence of problems. It's the ability to deal with them. We all know that life throws obstacles at us every day. Some are small, some are large, and you know, we this is part of the human experience, and we can choose to be happy in spite of the problems, the obstacles, whatever's happening in the world. We can choose happiness, and the more you practice this, the, the easier and the better it gets. It's actually the idea of, of thinking. I'm going to vibrate in pure love regardless of what happens. And then, you know, be proactive, take action. If, you know, if you've been dealing with any type of problem, maybe you've got a family situation, maybe you're taking care of elderly parents, maybe you've got little kids that um, take up your whole day and there's the problems, not even really problems that come with that. That's, that's part of what we sign up for. Not just when we have kids, but dropping into this life we sign up for these, we sign up for these experiences. So remember that happiness is not the absence of problems. Happiness is your ability to deal with them. You know, and I have some pretty hardcore first-hand experience with that this year. Um, it's been going on now for a long time. I'm not done with it yet, but this is just one, one thing. There's always things. So I think that if we realize we can be happy if we choose to, regardless of what's going on, it can make a really big difference in the frequency of love that we're able to vibrate in. And to me, that's, that's a, a choice. It's a choice, right? So the second thing is, is this, feeling sad after making a decision doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. Oh my goodness. Think about that. If you have to make a decision, some t and we all do, we all have e easy decisions, we have daily decisions, we have big decisions that affect other people. But when you make a big decision, or maybe make a small decision, and it makes you sad, it makes you a little bit sad because it's a decision that you know is the right thing. Um, that's the point. It doesn't mean it's the wrong decision. So I think we need to be willing to make the hard choices, make the hard decisions, and sit with the sadness for a minute. If that's an, an emotion that you need to feel, don't be afraid to do that. In fact, that's one of the ways that we clear some of these emotions that come at us as human beings is we really feel them. You know, we shouldn't try to act like everything's perfect um, if we're having a moment where we've had to make a hard decision that makes us sad. Really feel that sadness and then you're able to release it. So this to me is really powerful because we do have to make decisions that might make us feel sad. And the thing is, is they might make us sad momentarily. And then, then making a hard decision, and not just sad, but it might make us, it might make us mad. It might make us, you know, we might be angry about something we have to make a decision about, but we know it's the right thing, right? That's an interesting thought. So these are all things that you could actually sit and journal if you can relate to any of this stuff. You know, sit down and journal some of these thoughts. What comes out of this? 
What do you feel when I say that? You know, have you had to make a hard decision recently that made you sad, but you knew it was the right thing? You know, we all, we all do this. And I think we do ourselves a disservice if we don't make those hard decisions um, because we're putting off something that might be in inevitable, right? Okay, so the third thing is, is, is this, the third, the third thought. You're not stressed because you're doing too much. You're stressed because you're doing too little. Can you think about that? So I'm gonna say that again and then continue. You're not stressed because you're doing too much. You're stressed because you're doing too little of what moves you and makes you feel the most alive. So think about that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we think, well, I need to clear this off my plate. I need to clear that off my plate so I'll be less stressed. When we stress ourselves with things that um, we know is our passion, our creativity, what makes us feel alive, then this is the good kind of stress because this makes us grow, this makes us stronger. You know, it's like people who train for a marathon or any type of hard physical thing. This is, this is the stress that's making us feel alive. And I think that is the problem, is we're not doing too little of the things that stress us. We're not doing enough of the things that stress us that make us feel alive. You know, this is such a perfect thing to sit with and journal. You know, what are you not doing that makes you feel alive that might stress you? You know, do you need to start doing cold plunges? Do you need to lose 10 pounds? Maybe you need to lose 50 pounds. And that's a stress that's gonna make you feel alive if you get out and really, really move your body and make it make yourself uncomfortable. And of course, there's nuances on all the sides of this. You know, you need to make sure that you're healthy enough to really challenge yourself physically if that's what you need to do. But that is a beautiful thing. We need to do more of what stresses us but makes us feel alive. This one, I love. I love, I love that so much because it's so powerful if you start adding these things in that stress you but they make you feel alive. Think about anybody that starts a business. You know, as a person who has started multiple businesses, it is stressful. But I will tell you, I never feel more alive than when I'm doing something creative and something that I know is gonna bring, you know, beauty to the planet and to other humans. There's, there's nothing that makes me feel more alive, even if it's stressful along the way. You know, so stress yourself a little more with the things that make you, that make you feel alive. <laughs> that one is so great. Cold plunging, right? That's on my list of stuff to do regularly. I'll turn the shower to cold um, for a few minutes almost every time I get in, but it's not the same as cold plunging, right? Okay, the fourth one. The lesson you struggle with will repeat itself until you learn from it. Oh, <laughs> You know, whatever lesson that you need to learn um, and you struggle with, you're gonna keep repeating those things until you learn from them. This doesn't um, matter what it is. It could be maybe you keep attracting the same person into your life, in your friendship base, in your partner relationship base, in the jobs that you take, in the, you know, whatever, whatever it is. You know, whatever lessons you're struggling with, you're gonna keep getting them until you learn from them. And again, this is another perfect opportunity to sit and journal. Because when you write things down, it gives, it gives cement to them. It gives you know, validity and it makes them solid and it makes you really look at them. And I know that whenever I write things down that I'm, I'm, I'm having an issue with, in fact, I did this about a week ago. I sat with a whole bunch of questions I was having. Relationship questions, business questions, things that I really just was like, I need to know some answers to these. And I literally wrote two full pages of just questions. And then the next day I, I sat with my journal and I looked at the questions and I said to myself, what does my higher self want to tell me? And I went through both of these pages and I went through each question. And as I asked myself the question out loud that was already written down, the answers came out and the answers came out on every single one of the questions and there was a whole bunch more in fact let me show you this this is this is really interesting uh actually i don't know if i want to show you because this is personal and i'm like thinking somebody could actually stop stop the video and maybe read some of these so i'm going to change my mind on that one um so that to me is a good one right 
um, learning our lessons, writing things down, getting, you know, getting guidance from our, from our higher self. Okay, now the last one of these five is this. Never regret a day in your life, okay? Good days give us happiness. Bad days give us experience. The worst days give us lessons. The best days give us memories. So be confident in God's plan that you don't, that be so confident in God's plan that you don't even get upset when things go wrong. It's just life testing you. Now, isn't that amazing? Like, so think about that. I'm going to read this again. Never regret a day in your life. Good days give you blessings. Bad days give you experience. The worst days give you lessons. The best days give you memories. So be confident in God's plan that you don't even get upset when things go wrong. It's just life testing you. You know, have a good day if something goes wrong. How can you put a positive spin on it? And you know, I've said this before, my mom was one of the most positive people um, on the planet. Like, seriously. Um, she used to actually have this sign uh, on her door. The last 10 years of her life, she lived in an assisted living. She had MS and she needed help with every aspect of, of taking care of her. So she lived very near me. It was actually a walk down the block from me. So I saw her all the time, but she had this door, a sign on her door that was, she, she was an artist and she drew a picture of a pelican and she wrote on there, you can be a pelican or you can be a pelican. And it was just this goofy, um, goofy saying, but it was so my mom. And she had these little things, um, inspirational sayings, uh, motivational, positive things that she had taped all over the walls of her, you know, of her room and where she was. And she was just like life threw some things at her um, in the in the last part of her life as far as health wise. But she never lost her her sheer joy of being alive and being around her children, her grandchildren, enjoying, you know, the yummy things that she would eat. Like she was just this lover of good food and she had a massive sweet tooth that did not help her health problems, but it was, it brought her so much joy. So this is one of those things that we can take the good days. We can take the hard days and we might, if we put a different spin on them, they don't have to be so hard. Right? So that one I really love. Now this is, uh, let me see if I can find what I wrote here. Okay. So I sat down Thursday and at the Lionsgate portal at 8.08 p.m. and I was totally all ready. I had my little candle and it was outside. It was the perfect, perfect evening. It was warm, but the sun was almost down and so it was, it was just perfect. And I had my pen at the ready and I just kind of sat there quietly and I tapped in to what I knew the Lionsgate portal was all about as far as the star, the thinning of the veil, the star Sirius was in, a, in alignment with the planet. And there were just all of these transformational, magical rays of abundance and manifestation and transformation were flowing onto planet Earth. And I, I tuned into them, I felt them. And then I actually wrote, I'm just gonna read what I wrote. And um, this, this was really beautiful. Now is your time. Let the old fall away. Be brave, be courageous. You've earned the right to live your life on your terms. No one else matters right now. Be selfish and take care of Jane. That's what I wrote. Everything in your life is ready to flow to you. Anything, anyone you want or desire, you've sacrificed enough. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to share that because it's a, it sounds, I don't know if it, I mean, that was just a, a thing that just dropped in for me. And I'm not going to expand on all the little things of why that had such deep, deep meaning for me. But I think, especially as women, and especially as a woman who feels deep empathy and compassion and generosity for everyone in my life, um, I don't take the time to take care of myself. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I do take care of myself, but on a, on a really deep reward, I deserve, I deserve to, to really pamper myself. And you know what? I'm, I was raised learning how to be, um, frugal. 
I was raised on, you know, being unselfish. And I'm happy that I have those traits. And I'm really grateful that I've been able to live my life in service to others. You know, but I have put myself on the back burner for most most of my life. It's, you know, I can't even, I really can't even think of, of times <laughs> when I'm just doing something selfish for myself. Like it's, it's, it's really that. And it's not that my life hasn't been full of joy and satisfaction and even abundance. You know, I've, I've, my life is good, but I don't, you know, I don't, I, I got a pedicure last month with one of my sisters and, um, that felt, you know, that felt really awesome, but I don't even do ever do that. I'd probably had a pedicure 10 years ago. <laughs> So, and it was lovely. So that's a little tiny example. So, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of, of especially women out there who, who listen to this, who can relate to this. And I think that, um, you know what, I think it might be a good idea to actually read that again. If in anything for myself, for a reminder, um, I think that, and, and maybe you need this too. Now is your time. Let the old energy, let the old fall away. Be brave and be courageous. You've earned the right to live your life on your own terms. No one else matters right now. Be selfish. Take care of yourself. Everything in your life is, is ready to flow to you. Anything and anyone you want or desire, you have sacrificed enough. And, you know, it doesn't have to change the person that you are and the way you give to the world. It doesn't have to. Um, it doesn't have to change. But I think part of this human experience is is the experience of, of of maybe some pampering and maybe some rewarding. You know, I had a really dear new friend tell me about a week ago. You need to reward yourself, like. And I I kind of didn't really know what that meant, you know. I, I think rewarding myself means going up on a great big hike and hiking to the top of a mountain. And, and in a way that is, you know, that of course that is. I'm rewarding myself for and keeping my physical fitness, but um, I need to really sit and think about that. I need to think, what does that, what does that mean? What does that mean to reward myself? I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I would say this, if you're still watching this and uh, you can relate to this even slightly. I love to hear what you think because if you're a person who has been in selfless service and it's it's not that it's not gratifying. It's it's absolutely the the way to walk through life for the majority of this life. But there's a lot of things that I still want to do. There's a lot of things places I want to see. And I've actually done a fair amount of traveling. It's been a while. And there's been nuances of the traveling that have not really been the best, but um, that's another story, another video. But I'd love to hear what you think and if you can relate to any of these things at all. So I hope you have a beautiful week ahead. Um, do some journaling. You know, I really say this every time, but there's a reason. There's a reason that I encourage you to sit and write your thoughts and, and listen for answers because the answers will come to you. And we have so much wisdom inside of ourselves and when we connect to God, to our creator, and we, we take the time to really listen, um, we can get answers to the, to the deepest problems and even the things that we find joyful, we can, we can find ways to expand those. So, I, so yeah, to me that felt like a really relevant part of this message. So. So I hope you have a beautiful week ahead. Um, let me know what you think about this. I think it's a, you know, just goes with the whole theme of it's being a be it's a beautiful time to be alive. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you have a beautiful day and we'll see you next time.